Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to have a follow-up video to the prior one I just posted with a fully restored Yamaha amplifier where I went through a basic test of total harmonic distortion and total harmonic distortion plus noise measurements. The reason for doing a second video on the same type of test is that uh, we're now looking at a amplifier that I call my mule unit. This is basically my frame of reference unit which I leverage when I make any type of changes to uh, for my rebuilds. And the reason is we want to make sure that we're not uh, doing a detriment to the unit by replacing components blindly. So I got into a habit to always having a, uh, a very stable working as close as possible to new when it left the factory type of unit and so i view this this thing right here as beauty because it's a very nice unit actually as a tool rather than an amplifier that i uh, use once in a while for any kind of like major changes and so this is what i used to you know basically to do my improvements on my selector board on my power supply uh modes that i did so um the goal is to basically have an a B like like a non-scientific A B type of test between a unit as it was new when it left the factory. I mean I'm 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 being um, um, you know basically uh, um, you know hoping that this uh, is as close as as it was when it left the factory. I have no no way of going back in time, but uh, we'll go in a minute through what I did to ensure that's the case versus the uh, fully restored unit in the prior video. So that, that's the summary of this exercise. So before we turn this uh, unit on, again, we're gonna follow the same type of test. Uh, this is hooked up to an atom load, same instruments, the same settings. Uh, the one couple of things I did different though is I turned on the mat on my scope. So now we can look at uh, not just that uh, uh, voltage RMS, but what that, what that translates into uh, power uh, by leveraging the mat and I also turn on the line uh, level RMS on my analyzer so but uh, not the settings settings are the same so uh, again uh, let's take a quick peek under the hood of this thing to, to basically summarize some of the changes I had to make in order to make sure that this unit is a reliable doesn't blow up on me on the bench and B that it functions as close as uh, I could imagine it did 45 years ago when it left the factory. So uh, let's start with the power supply, which is probably the most important thing that needs to be addressed in any vintage unit. Uh, and let's go to the heart of the problem here, to those bulk capacitors, which uh, for uh, those of you that are not familiar with the Yamaha B2 um, or have not watched my other videos, this... Um, are exceptionally good capacitors that were that Nishikon, uh, you know, provided to Yamaha 40 some years ago, and they still do provide very good capacitors. But the thermal management of this setup here, it's basically like the power supply, uh, uh, regular power supply board, um, stays inverted over the capacitors, and there's quite a bit of heat coming out of this heat sinks from the uh, regulator tra regulator transistors and it's kind of like baking all the components in there and it's it's, it's there's poor poor uh, circulation and to uh, couple that with a unit that's basically placed in the cabinet it it could very quickly cook the components inside and this makes it hard to find capacitors that are still within the original specifications of what they were when they left the factory 45 years or so ago so to to, to solve for that i actually had to go through a painful uh, search for them through about going through about over 50 uh, bulk caps from multiple units uh, to find four that are within spec and when i mean within spec they are not just within the same capacitance rating which is 18,000 18,000 microfarads uh, these are all right around 18,000 microfarads but are also have very low uh, leakage or you know as, as low as there is for even a new capacitors and i'm talking about current leakage and very low serious resistance. I did, uh, I did, I did select them using my Sencor LCR analyzer and then I reformed them. So I'm very confident that they work as, as good as they were new. Uh, I mean, I, there's no way for me to know that more than the kind of test that I did, but they're, they're right on the money. 
a uh, few other things that I did here on the regulated rails of this power supply. I did change the input, uh, I mean, the, the, the filter capacitors, both are the input are the output of the regulated rails, just to make sure that this don't crap on me and I st stabilize my heat sinks. I did raise those power resistors a little bit off the board, if you could see there, so they don't continue to scorch the board, even though I'm using this uh, amplifier only as a, you know, as a tool for very short periods of time, as I mentioned. So there you have the changes that I did to the power supply, obviously. Uh, basically, this entire unit was taken apart. All my solder joints I had to redo. I didn't clean it as, as well as I would clean it otherwise, but it's clean enough, and the solder joints are solid. Oh, and I forgot to mention, obviously, we... You know, we have new relays in here. I could not leave the old relays in. So the new, the, we have new relays to make sure that speaker contact is preserved. Uh, moving forward down is uh, our, let's look at the, the driver boards. For the driver boards, we have new um, trim pots, multi-turns, so I could get my adjustments easy. This unit right now, it's adjusted to factory spec, just as it was the mule unit, I mean, the, the rebuilt unit. Then you see two... Uh, there are actually four per board uh, VMA caps that you see in there. Those are decoupling caps. Uh, and the original orange film decoupling caps that Yamaha uses for most of their uh, amplifiers, except the newer uh, series, I mean, the latest ones, probably around after series 8,000, 9,000, then they start using something different. But the orange one are horrible. They fail. They actually short out. So I didn't want to take a chance on that. So I replaced those. And other than that, I guess just a, a lithic capacitor, the bipolar, you see an ES cap, cap there replaced. And also I replaced the 390 ohm fusible resistors because the original ones drift. I find them to drift in most of every B2 that I service. So I have some Vishai metal film there, but none of the changes to the driver board should impact the original performance of the unit. They just, they're just they just hardening the reliability so that the unit doesn't crap up, up on me on the board, on a bench while I'm working with it. Uh, everybody's gonna probably be curious what I did with the selector board. Well, in keeping the unit original, I left the original selector board in there, but again, this is not the original one that was in this unit. I, I had to go through multiple uh, boards to find a selector board that was not messed with before. As you guys know, most of these units do have an issue with the selector board. So over the years, the people, uh, um, previous owners are probably, you know, attempting to fix it. So a lot of them are damaged. So I had to find one that hasn't been messed with and then clean it properly. I did test the contact resistance individually to make sure that there's no compromise there. So it works as new. This is probably about year and a half two years old when i cleaned it last but it should still be good again i'm keeping this in a decent environment but eventually it will fail because you know there's there's moisture and stuff that goes in there even though i live in california so it's pretty dry but nonetheless uh this selector board is not a uh it doesn't rob my sound or my performance in any way right now so we could we could set that worry aside same thing with the uh, trim pods these were all individually opened and cleaned put back together and measured to work as new all right, so in a nutshell, that summarizes the hardening uh, that I did to this unit to A, ensure that it doesn't crap up on me on the bench, and B, is that I preserve its uh, original performance so we could get as close as possible to how this unit functioned and sounded uh, when it left the factory floor about 45 years ago because I, A, need to test it on a bench for performance, and B, in the second... Uh, I mean, not, not necessarily uh, less important for the sound performance when I actually listen to amplifiers in my listening room. So, um, as I said, it's easier to uh, ruin this amp than to make it better because it's already a fantastic amp to begin with. That said, uh, the 99% of the amps out there that are vintage, uh, it's almost impossible to get it to this uh, state unless, again, you go through the painful exercises that I went through to find original parts so most likely you would want to replace those uh parts that i just called out with new especially those bulk caps uh, probably going to use something like that which are also very good nishikon capacitors all right so now that uh that concludes my brief description of what this unit is and what is the reason for comparing it to the full rebuilding so okay this is our frame of reference i'm going kind of backwards because i posted that uh, rebuilt video first so it's you know this is this is what that rebuilt unit should be compared to 
Let's turn this thing on. As I said, it's already hooked up to my uh, analyzer and we should take it to 100 watts, which is the same test that I did and look at THD uh, and then THD plus N. Then I have a bonus test in here uh, to satisfy the curiosity of some of my Audio Karma uh, buddies that were questioning, um, you know, how, uh, how reliable is a original working unit? So, all right, so um, just for you guys to understand, I'm, work, I'm looking at my math here. So I'm looking at 100 watts, 28 volts RMS, which is 28 point something. So it's, that is correct. So we're gonna do the same thing for the second, um, for the second uh, channel here. And we are looking at that sine wave there. Very clean sine waves. If I stack them on top of each other, they're, uh, one of them will cancel out. Okay, so there was about 100 watts and the total harmonic distortion here, no noise included, is roughly 008, 0 0.008. Now, percentage-wise, comparing to the other unit, which was 0 0.002, that's close to four times more. But we're splitting hairs here because we're already at levels that are really, really hard to perceive. And um, if we're looking quickly at uh, the harmonic profile, you know, yes, this still looks like a triode. So we, we're really not changing the harmonic profile of the amplifier uh, with the new improvement. So the sound is preserved, right? It's it's gonna sound really good already, um, you know, as it left as it was original. All right, so let's go back to uh, looking at. Uh, I'm gonna take this down because I do not want to change things on a fly at 100 watts of power. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna go, go in here and change my uh, test to a, a THD plus N. So now you could see here on my uh, display, it switched to THD plus N. So we're gonna do the same thing here again. We're going to uh, get this to 100 watts. I don't know if I mentioned, um, maybe I did. Um, I did turn the mat on the scope for this exercise, which I should have done last time. And I did turn the line level on the uh, on the analyzer as well, so you could see um, they're, they're not going to be a hundred percent matching. But that's just because the analyzer is more accurate than my scope. So if I want perfect. I'm going to look at the. I'm going to look at the uh, analyzer. Oops, I went too far. Oh, I already cheated because you guys already saw the next test that I was going to do, which is taking this thing into clipping. But if you paid attention there and you cut your eye, it was 135 watts and it didn't clip. So uh, that's cheating. Forget about that. We'll go to that test in a minute. Okay, so this, this is THD plus N right now. And so, yes, the other one, THD plus N, was still just over 002, just a little bit. It was... So this is percentage-wise much higher if you're looking at it because it's you know three four times what the other unit does. But again, we're splitting hairs here. Like you know, you're not gonna hear this. It is it is the other unit is quieter. That's for sure. Uh, I'm actually going and decreasing this to zero because I want to take it back to THD. Um, and I'm gonna go back to THD right now only. I don't want the noise in there, and I want to look at. We're gonna look right now. To see approximately when this thing is going to clip. For that, I'm going to take both channels to 100 watts, so the power supply, the transformers are fully loaded. So we're not cheating with just one channel only. Uh, as you guys know, uh, the B2 is not a dual mono because the transformers are shared for both channels. So at least for the gate supply, the source supply is individual, which is what takes most current, but to be technically accurate, we want to load this amp. Uh, I'm not going to take both channels at the same time to clipping because I don't want to wait to stay at clipping for too long. Um, overall, after all, this is a vintage amp with only very minor uh, hardening on the performance. Okay, so now let's look at the green. Let's look at the green one. Let's look at my left. Uh, channel there 
Uh, so it's 100 watts right now. I'm looking at the green because it's it's gonna grow, that, that sine wave, the amplitude is going to grow. So it's more real estate on the room. All right, so let's look at that. 127, 140. You could see right about 140, like right there, you see it about 140. See it, see that uh, bottom and top are starting to flatten. And we could see this on the analyzer as well, right? Uh, look at the channel below at 100 watts. As soon as I lower this a little bit, look, it goes back to normal. See, like at 132 watts is no clipping. Of course, this is laboratory, lab uh, environment. So the amp may clip at different frequencies. This is a one kilohertz. And so there you have it. In case, in case you guys are curious of A, is a vintage amp reliable to take it there for sure period of time? Yes. Uh, would you do it continuously? No. And B, is the vintage amp uh, without the major improvements that you guys seen in my um, rebuild units going to uh, be more powerful or less powerful? No, it's the same. Because in the in the new uh, in the new units, I mean the, the newly rebuilt units, I'm not touching anything in that uh, amplifier circuit. We're not adding more VFETs. We're not raising the rail voltage. So power is going to be the same. We're still working with the same um, stock unit, and we're just making sure it's more reliable. And along the way, we're picking up uh, at least some bench performance improvements in the listening space. As I said, um, this the I mean, you know, for this unit right now, if I take it into my listening space and I put my ear on my tweeter, on my very sensitive Yamaha and it's 1,000 speakers, I will possibly hear that like a very low faint noise um, in the new one. I think that's either a psychoacoustic on my side, but I cannot hear anything. It's pitch black. It's the same as my Yamaha MX-10,000, which is that thing has alien technology in there or my other high-end amplifiers that I have in here. It's just peach black. There's nothing coming out of this B2. But that's because this amp was that good to begin with. Um, then here you see it, what this amp was when it left the factory. Again, that's me being hopeful there, but I think I'm not too far from that, uh, being, being uh, accurate about that statement with this particular amp on my bench right now. So there you have it. We looked at A-B testing THD versus uh, THD and THD plus N from a new amplifier, a newly rebuilt amplifier versus this, the, the benchmark. We took this amp into clipping. I should have taken the other one, which is very much the same, about just about 140 uh, watts goes into clipping. And we're, we're also uh, showcasing that, uh, you know, uh, even on original condition, this amp was very freaking good. So. For you guys out there that are looking to rebuild your B2, be careful what parts you change because you have very good chances, a lot more chances to make it worse than make it better because the amp to begin with was really good, right? And so good luck to you all and thank you for watching. If you have any feedback, let me know in the comments. If not, you could also look at uh, the Auto Karma trend uh, and, uh, and uh, leave your comments there as well. Thank you for watching. I hope this was worth your time. Bye.